This Blake Lively drama only continues as Justin Baldoni has recently posted on his Instagram talking about the movie. He doesn't mention anything about Blake, but he is making it very clear that he knows what this movie is about. He's definitely spreading a completely different message than Blake about this movie, and that has been the problem since the very beginning with people loving the way that Justin has promoted it and disliking the way that Blake has handled everything. And the thing is, she's still continuing to talk about this movie in a lighthearted way, really brushing off the hard parts of this film. But of course, that's not the only thing going on right now. There is a JLo and Ben Affleck divorce update as the two of them are trying to settle things financially between each other and it's just still not sounding very good. In other news, there's the Sabrina Carpenter versus Travis Scott situation that we're gonna talk about that involves Nicki Minaj. A lot of celebrity things going on this week, so we are going to talk about it all. It's been a messy last couple of weeks and things are only getting crazier in the celeb world and we're kicking the drama right off by talking about how Sabrina Carpenter was bringing up some Nicki Minaj and Travis Scott drama to celebrate being number one on the Billboard 200 charts. Sabrina was battling Travis Scott for the number one spot since she released her new album, Short and Sweet, and he's released his new project days before Rodeo. Last Tuesday, the numbers were in and revealed Sabrina had come out on top, reaching number one just by 600 units. As they tweeted, Billboard 200 number one, Sabrina Carpenter, Short and Sweet, 362,000, 233 million on-demand streams, and 184,000 in pure sales. As for Travis Scott, they tweeted number two, Travis Scott, days before rodeo, 361,000, 40.63 million on demand streams, and 331,000 pure sales. Sabrina had previously tweeted out saying, This one's for Nikki, which seemed to be a promise to beat out Travis Scott in her honor, as back in 2018, there was a whole showdown between the two for number one, as Travis Scott released his album Astro World and Nikki released her album. Album Queen. At the time, Nikki had called out Travis saying he didn't sell as many albums as he said he did, calling out the fact that his then girlfriend Kylie Jenner was the one that was helping him sell. But Sabrina came out on top this time on Nikki's behalf, and Nikki was on live the other day giving her a shout out and also shouting out her fans. Oh, and shout out to Sabrina Carpenter, shout out to all the Sabrina Carpenter fans. Um, yes. And this week, Sabrina also posted that Nikki had sent her flowers and she wrote on Instagram, I adore you at Nicki Minaj and the Barb's. This is so thoughtful and these are so beautiful. So some past drama was bringing some people together this week, the Nikki fans and the Sabrina fans, but something that isn't bringing people together. Well, it's this JLo and Ben Affleck drama because their divorce is just sending people in a million different directions with the way they've been handling everything. Sources are now coming out to say that they're Beverly Hills home came between them as Ben was more sold on it than Jen. But even the sources behind the scenes are a mess with the way that one has countered the other in saying that Ben wasn't that sold on this house because it's in Beverly Hills and it was a pain to get his kids because the kids live in Brentwood and go to school in Brentwood and noted that his house now is in Brentwood. So there's no way that this Beverly Hills house was all his idea and this was the only reason why they live there was because of him, but the other sources claimed that the big $68 million house that they shared was not something that JLo loved. People wrote, the $68 million mansion was Ben's idea and a major compromise for her. The source says of the estranged couple's marital home, which they purchased for reported $60.8 million in May 2023 and publicly listed for sale just over a year later in July 2024 for about $6 million more. She agreed to it because of its spacious layout, accommodating both their families, a gym and a pickleball court office space. Plus it has two private entrances, the source adds. They also said, however, Lopez's taste doesn't usually lean ultra modern. The source says she loves the romantic Spanish European vibe. So there's just all this drama that is coming out behind the scenes of all the things that were going wrong between her and Ben and the things that split them apart because at the beginning of the year, she was all goo goo gaga about her love story with Ben. And now we're hearing that it wasn't all that behind the scenes, even though she tried to make a whole album about it. She tried to make a whole movie talking about how in love they are. They came together after all these years. She's a major romantic, but obviously it just didn't work out. She did seem to poke some fun at the situation at least a little bit in the fact that things have been so crazy in the press and in life as she posted on Instagram this week with the caption, oh, it was a summer. 
So at least she can kind of maybe, I mean, hopefully she's laughing at it a little bit, a little bit. I don't know. I mean, with the caption like that, it kind of felt like it was coming off that way because it really has been a summer for her. And honestly, it's been a year for her. But there's also been previous reports of finances being a huge holdup in their divorce process for them as they have had struggles agreeing on how to allocate their assets, especially when it comes to business and projects that they've worked on since they did not have a prenup. So this is something that has really caused them a lot of issues. And it seems they can't agree on any of the things that are happening right now, any of the conversations regarding money. The two of them are actually set to attend the, the Toronto Film Festival, though. So that could be a bit awkward given everything going on. And the other day, they were apparently both leaving the same place around the same time and just missed each other by a hair. And the press has been going crazy over this almost encounter that they had, but they didn't see each other. So maybe in Toronto, they'll be seeing each other or something. I just already see the headlines that it's going to be crazy. But that is what is going on as of right now with these two. As for Blake Lively, oh man, you guys, it just doesn't end, does it? Blake has gotten some heat for how she's promoted the movie It Ends With Us compared to Justin Baldoni. And he came out just this past week to once again let everyone know how important he is taking the messaging of this film and what's included in it, posting on his Instagram this post that says, Dear Survivor, you embody resilience and courage, qualities that shine bright even on the darkest days. In the tapestry of your life, each thread tells a story of endurance, strength, and hope. Every step forward you take, no matter how small, is a declaration of your unyielding spirit and an inspiration to others. You may not always see the impact you have, but your journey encourages and motivates, lighting the path for those of us still searching for the light. While I can never fully understand your pain and all you have endured, I want you to know that you are never alone in this fight. We are with you. You are not just surviving, you are thriving, and in your thriving, you inspire us all. May your journey forward be filled with moments of profound peace, and may you remember as you fight for joy, you are liberating us all, sending you gratitude, strength, and love, Justin Baldoni. I had also previously mentioned that he had gone to a screening of It Ends With Us and spoke to the audience, just talking to them about what this movie means, what it means to other people, how it could be triggering to people. So he's really understanding what this film is and the power it holds. Meanwhile, Blake has only continued to talk about this movie being so much more than the DV, brushing it off instead of acknowledging the hardest parts of this film with clips like this still going around of her online. Everyone tends to want to talk about um, why this is such an important film and why it's so empowering. And, and I think that that is really important. But I think what's beautiful about this film is there is every color of human emotion in it. There's levity, there's joy, there's humor, there's hope, there's pain, there's tragedy, there's violence, there's trauma, there's um, sadness, there's um, uh, exaltation, there's, there's, you know, life, there's death, there is like love, there's loss, there's just, I mean, really like, it is, it is a kaleidoscope of the human experience. It hasn't seemed to stop her though, as she's been spotted out with Ryan Reynolds this week, just walking around, living her life as usual, and was just celebrating her birthday amongst a ton of stars at Taylor Swift's house. And honestly, it kind of makes you wonder about all of this, you know, like she's basically gotten canceled for how she's talked about the movie and people feeling like she undermined Justin Baldoni as the director by taking charge. But with all the noise and all the backlash, do we think she actually understands why people are so upset or has it gotten so loud and crazy that she just thinks that it's all ridiculous and the point of all of it has been completely lost? Like, is she opening her social media accounts, seeing people say that her outfits are ugly and her hair was bad and thinking that the other criticism is just as ridiculous? Like, you'd hope that hopefully she would see why people are so upset and wanting her to just take the topic so serious instead of promoting DVSM grab your florals type of fun girly movie movie, but who knows? She knows people are upset since she did post on Instagram trying to save face by sharing information on how to access the DV hotline, but overall people just seem to have this new perspective of her in a colder way, feeling like she isn't sorry for how she promoted the movie and it's changed their view of her. Maybe time will change that and she'll win people back somehow in the future, but for right now, people have seemingly had enough when it comes to Blake Lively, but that is what has been said as of right now. I certainly want to know what you guys think about everything from Sabrina, JLo, and obviously what Justin Baldoni has said about It Ends With Us compared to Blake Lively. Let me know your thoughts. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.